most people now think of Peace First as a global digital platform supporting youth-led social change all over the world. But remember, Peace First was started by young people. These are the OGs. These are the folks who helped bring Peace Games, Peace First to life when we were just starting out. I want to start with why did you get involved with Peace Games? What is your first memory of the organization? One very vivid memory I have is that first year that Peace Games was incorporated, we had offices in a basement that flooded horribly in the spring. I've got a photo, I think, of all of us. We would stay up till midnight writing curriculum. We would drop whatever we were doing, hop on the subway to go fill in for somebody who wasn't teaching. We would show up in our boots in the office and bail water and move furniture. We would do whatever it took and we would do it with a sense of like, well, this is what's needed now, so let me do this. As I've had more work life, realizing what a rare gift that is to work with a team of people who will literally do whatever is needed with no complaint because we're all in it together and we're all moving this organization forward and we're all here to support each other. I don't think there was ever a time that I was more fearless in my own life than I was when I was 19, 20, 21. And kind of now I reflect back and think, oh, I was, I was 21 in writing a socio-emotional learning curriculum. You know, did, did I have the expertise to do that? You know, I don't know, but at the time I was just so confident. The learning that I was getting as a young person by collaborating with other committed, talented young people, the learning that I was getting by being in schools and being a part of the greater community was just so much more than any classroom experience I would have that I, I chose to dedicate my time to Peace Games and figured I'd get a cert certification path later on. And and that was one of the best decisions I made for myself as a young person. The opportunity to be in schools and to be leading something, right? So yeah, we were all leaders at Harvard, but you were with all these other um, top people of their class. And so the opportunity to be inside of a classroom, off campus, doing something what I would say felt real. I valued so much about my Peace Games experience. And one was, as many have said, um, the opportunity to go beyond my dorm and my classroom and really get to know people who live in the community um, was just invaluable. And um, so um, it was so meaningful to develop relationships and multi-generational relationships with the teachers in the schools as well as with the students and young people. We were really encouraged to bring who we were and honored for what we had to contribute, our insights, our compassion, our skills. It's just very powerful for people to have that experience. These are some of the folks who, from being a student to a board member, curriculum writers, principals, AmeriCorps members, our school-based work is what Peace Games was um, for so long. Schools are not necessarily the easiest places to work because they have a thousand things they need to do um, and they've got time for about three of them. And adding something like social emotional learning into that mix was not always easy. And there was something really powerful about integrating these ideas into the same places where young people were learning so much about what it means to be citizens, to work with people who are different from them, uh, to develop a sense of themselves. What the program looked like when we were working in schools. What Peace Games was like was building these skills in the same way that we built the skills of reading and math, right, in the schools. I think that was one of our big ideas. If you can kind of learn violent behavior, you can learn peacemaking behavior. This was as important as reading. This is as important as your math to learn how to get along with other people right here in your classroom, right here in your neighborhood, right here in your community, right here in your city, right here in your world. In Los Angeles, a unified school district being the second largest district in the country. And during a time where there was a lot of demographic changes in most of our city with black and brown and um, just a lot of uh, violence with youth. There was definitely a need. My office 
was the Department of Transportation. Peace first, peace gains. It brought just life to 186th Street School because I am a firm believer if there's no peace, there's no learning. So our children came from two um, different communities and then there was a lot of um, tension going on between the Black students and the Hispanic families. And so Peace First was just the perfect fit for us to help our children to learn how to create, create their own peaceful villages. I could tell that Peace Games and Peace First had already been a substantive part of what was going on in each of these schools by the time I entered. And so working with my peers, you know, in that AmeriCorps exp experience, there were, you know, eight or nine of us at a given time, um, moving around, having our different classrooms, making connections with kids, making connections with teachers and one another, doing a year of service that for me turned into two because I was just so passionate about what was happening could feel I could feel there being a difference that's why I stayed I could see kids lives changing when they were engaging with the role that we as AmeriCorps members got to have as mentors to be the people that teachers could call on and say hey so and so is having a meltdown in my classroom can you can you come because we were flexible in ways that teachers, even like school psychologists and others, didn't have that same flexibility. And we could drop what we were doing very often and show up. It was just about resourcing these kids that, that needed more than just the curriculum. There's a lot of social emotional learning programs out there that, that teach young people to identify emotions and you know some of the core concepts of communication, conflict resolution. Our students had to also put those into practice. Share a project that, that you remember that, that particularly moved you. One of the um, projects that I, I really um, appreciated was the Peace Garden. The teachers had to take turns in cultivating this, this garden and working with their students peaceably um, to get these gardens done. And at the end, when this garden grew, um, they, the parents came and made soup and dishes out of the harvest. The Peace Garden had lasting impact, and it was incredible how that provided a space for conversation. And it just reminds me that it's built on the back of like all of these other uh, generations of peacemaking work. And then you also mentioned parents, Alice, and it was so cool because the parents themselves desired to do Peace First projects. And they wanted to engage in their own community service learning. And so they were doing like parallel projects to what the students were doing. And it helped them, helped us also integrate like parenting advice to these, these parents about how to parent from a peaceful perspective. It showed them like connection to what their students were doing. It gave them the language of peacemaking. And I could just see this wave of peace going out, um, you know, from all elements of the school that desired to just participate in, in the work of peacemaking and actually being able to see something happen from their own hands. This community service uh, project brought principal, teachers, students, and the community together in a way that was just awesome. A lot of the folks who will be viewing what we put together are young people all over the world. Um, I'd love to hear advice you have for them as they embark on their, their change-making, their peacemaking journey. I think for me, the lesson and the advice uh, all comes around one point, and that's that uh, young people are powerful. Find your people, right? Once you've got your people, you can do literally anything. And um, when our generation tells you to stop or be smaller, don't listen to us. Go out in the world and be that peacemaker because blessed are the peacemakers. And if you're a peacemaker, it will open many doors for all of your goals and your dreams. You've got a big idea and a big dream and share it. Don't hold on to it and think you're, it's only you who has to fulfill it. Invite other people in and then give it to them. Um, and then that's the way it's gonna grow. And that's the way your vision and your dream is gonna get fulfilled in this world. Thank you for the joy of this conversation, the joy of, well, some of you almost 30 years of friendship and for the early work of shaping Peace Games, Peace First, and what will come next. Being a part of Peace First as a fellow, uh, was there were a series of breakthrough and mountaintop moments 
uh, getting to meet other young people, um, making a difference.